iOS 14 is a lot more like Android than it's ever been before. And that's actually a good thing. So let's go ahead, take a closer look at iOS 14 in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from c 4 Tech, And if you do end up finding this video informative, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. We've seen all the jokes and memes, and yes, a lot of these features have existed in Android for ages, but Apple has put their own little twist to it. So let's start with the obvious ones. iOS now has an app draw. Apple is calling this their app library. It's located at the extreme right end of all the home screens. We have a search bar up top and below that, we have all our apps stacked into neat little groups. Note the suggested on top. These are the apps that iOS thinks might be useful at the moment. Next to it is recently added. This is where all the newly downloaded apps pop up. And below that, we have utility, creativity, entertainment, games, social, and all that stuff are assorted. As usual though, we can always find these apps by using global search. Now, everyone has those apps that we don't often use. In previous iOS versions, the best way to keep them out of sight was to drag them into a folder and check them into a different home screen. With iOS 14, we can simply hide home screens. So that's a way more elegant solution. Now, there's a lot more to home screen customization here, beginning with widgets. They do behave a bit differently than their Android counterparts. For example, there's no way to resize them and we can't place them just anywhere we want. Adding a widget though is pretty straightforward. Long click on an empty space or an app icon, press the plus button to the top right and finally set the widget in place. There are a few constraints though, like widgets can only go to the left or right of a home screen and there can't be a widget on the right with no app icons on the left. Uh, now, where Apple has added some extra functionality to their widgets is through Smart Stacks. This basically is two or more widgets stacked on top of each other. We can swipe down to view all the information or let iOS dynamically change the widget depending on the circumstances. What's more, creating our own Smart Stack is very simple. Taking two similar sized widgets and putting them on top of each other creates a Smart Stack. We can then go on to edit widgets and add more widgets to the stack. As for now, we only have widgets from Apple's stock apps with the promise of more coming soon. After that, we now have a list of features aimed at improving multitasking. First, the picture-in-picture -picture mode. The controls and support for it has been expanded, so hitting on the PIP button on a video will bring it into a small window like this. From there, we can expand it, move it around, and even flick it aside where it reduces to an arrow-shaped pull tab and continues playing just the audio. Next up, phone calls in iOS 14 do not take up the whole screen. We can interact with phone calls through this tiny pop-up. Here's an interesting tidbit. AirPods can now automatically detect which device is being used and switch between them. It even works for phone calls when going from the iPad to the iPhone. Another app that's embraced this compact design philosophy is Siri. It appears as a small ball at the bottom of the screen and the results pop up on this card-like interface at the top of the screen. The only caveat is that while Siri does not take up the whole screen, we still can't interact with the app underneath while talking to Siri. Apple has also made it more intelligent with even more facts along with the ability to send audio messages. Moving on to app improvements, the Apple App Store now supports app clips. This is basically a truncated version of the app that we can use without having to download or install it. It's in fact quite similar to Google's instant apps. We also have a new Translate app, right now it only supports 11 languages, but more support should be coming soon. And like Google Translate, we have voice input too. Talking about Apple's own apps, Apple Maps comes with guides for a few major cities and even shows biking routes in some places. Memoji's gotten a bunch of updates. Our Memojis can now have masks on. Uh, messages, by the way, has gone through a major overhaul. We can pin conversations to the top, group messages. We also get mentions, inline replies, etc. And finally, rounding off the app improvements, we can choose our default browser and mail apps on iOS 14. All these features, except maybe Memoji, Everything is present in Android in some form or the other. So now let's take a look at a couple of fresh new features that iOS 14 brings to the table. And honestly, I wish Android gets these soon too. First, privacy indicators. There will be this little green dot whenever any app is using the camera and this little orange dot whenever any app is using the microphone. Next up, hidden under accessibility settings, we have touch settings and scrolling down, we get back tap. We can basically set two or three taps on the back of the iPhone to perform certain actions like here. We've set it to take a screenshot and activate Siri. It takes a couple of seconds, so it's not the fastest out there, but it does work. So that's about it for the major new features in iOS 14. Do let me know what is your favorite feature. For me, I kind of really like the app library. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of uh, you know, icons on the home, home screen setup. So this is a welcome change, especially now that we can uh, even have a homepage on iOS that's just widgets. 
no eye contact at all. Who doesn't get? Anyway, that's about all from me for this video. If you do end up liking it, then please subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.